Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas with Char Lotzenheiser from the Canton Classic Car Museum. Okay, we've already talked about how there's much more than cars at the museum, but it wouldn't be the Canton Classic Car Museum without those amazing classic cars. So what can we go find there? Well, I'm going to give you the tip of the iceberg. I can't certainly tell you about all the cars because I want you to come in. Well, right. I'm going to pique the curiosity of all the listeners out there. One of my favorites, and everyone's favorite, regardless as to whether you're from Canton, Ohio or not, is in the Canton Room, which we spoke about earlier, and it's our Canton fully bulletproof police car. Mm. It is astounding. I I just, the kids love it, adults love it. It's just, it's an amazing vehicle. Um, It's a 1937 Studebaker. We paid 800. I say we. It's like I'm a part of all these police department in 1937. <laughs> you weren't around in 37. No, I wasn't. Um, it, uh, they paid $800 for it, oh, and they put 3,000 pounds of 10-gauged armored plating that cost a dollar per pound. That was a lot of money, Susie, for one department. The windows, I tell people they can touch them. Okay, if you get caught touching them, tell them I said you could. Okay. But the windows are one and one-eighth inches thick. There are gun ports that unlocked out of those windows so you could shoot out of. Um, it, 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 there are two Motorola radios in the trunk so they could dispatch back and forth. And that's where the there's a corded phone in there. And then there's two fans, which, of course, was the central air conditioning. It's just a remarkable car. It's do back, they make cars like this do, anymore? Well, I'm sure they do, of course, make Bulletproof. But in 37, it was a pretty big deal for that's Canton, Ohio, to time. have this. It was very expensive. We only had one. Uh, but it was just, uh, and it's called the Flying Squadron. She's been known as the Bandit Car as well. Yeah. I think people forget what a, a crazy place Canton was back oh, in the day, Little Chicago. Little Chicago. In fact, I don't know if you know this, but in 1905, the Cleveland Plain Dealer wrote an article about Canton, and I'll quote, they said, Canton, Ohio, those, the most lured little city in the United Ooh. States. I know. Ooh, yeah, don't so. want that said about no, our hometown. But it was. But you know what? I, I, with that being said, um, it brought a lot of people. We yeah. were we were a booming city with a lot of money, a lot of industry. You know, the Diebold Company, the Timken. You know, we could just go on and on about the industry there and 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 what it brought and to I Canton. I always feel like when I'm talking about the history of a place that you're also talking about the future of the place Certainly. because look how things go around in circles and Stark County is one of those places that mm-hmm. has come full circle to where we're now on the cusp of another oh. boon time. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, just in my end of town and, you know, Tuscarawas is the dividing line of mm-hmm. the north end and south end of Canton. You know, we're moving and shaking down there and I'm thrilled that the Hercules building mm-hmm. you know, is now renovated in uh, apartments and uh, looks magnificent. And, uh, you know, the Hercules was very instrumental, started in 1915. Uh, engine company. Uh, oh, yes. And, of course, that was the Altman, you know, company right there where part of it is as well, which was the York mm-hmm. Ice Company in 1917 right there, started there. So it's really wonderful to see these old buildings refurbished. And I'm looking forward to more progress down there and, and more things to, to come to the south end of Canton. I loved what you said about the police car. It had a, it had a phone in it. It did. It's corded too. <laughs> you corded know, I, I, sometimes I'll put kids in it when I get kids children's <laughs> groups in it, and I'll say, "Pick up the phone." And they look at it like, "Where is it?" and "What is it?" And, and I'll say, "It's that black thing." And they they just look at it. And I go, "You pick it up, put it to your ear." And it, they, it truly is. It's like this foreign object. It makes me laugh. They are completely <laughs> clueless. Yeah. Like they look at it like you would a cell phone. Yeah. Go, where, where's no the screen? screen. <laughs> right. Where are the buttons? Oh, it's just, it's very entertaining <laughs> to me. And so yeah. you know, that's one of our our. Like I said, even if you're not from Canton, you have to appreciate what Canton had and, and that they had the ability to, to buy something and, and manufacture something like that. And it's the only one. The only yeah. one. So. Very, very cool. Very cool. And then as you walk through the museum, you know, you've got some unusual cars. We have a, a beautiful I don't know. Is this an oxymoron? A beautiful hearse? Well, you can say it's a, a say hearse it's beautiful? is beautiful. Okay. Sure, yeah, you know, it's a it's a it lovely is. car. Well, you know, to me, it's a rolling piece of art. Yeah, that's why I say yes. it's beautiful. It's a 1937 Packard, and the back of it is all hand carved mahogany. So it resembles curtain panels. Wow. It's just, it's magnificent. Uh, and it has a companion flower car to go with it. So they were actually owned by a funeral home in Vermilion, Ohio, called the Fisher Funeral Home. And uh, he had them customized. Mm. Uh, there were only three of them built. Uh, it was a 12-cylinder hearse, 12-cylinder Packard. And as far as I know, over the years that I've been looking, I've never found the other two. So this so could be the only one remaining be. of could the be. three. Yeah, and it's very cute. Our, our museum is put up in little dioramas. So in between the hearse and the flower car is a funeral parlor. But it's very entertaining. So those those signs I was telling you about, there's yes. one that says dead end. Okay. Oh. I know. I'm so, <laughs> do you, do you have a, <laughs> a dream shot? Yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> You know, it's it's kind of amazing when you think about it. As you're taking us through this tour, 
there you, you're finding some things that you just will not see other no, places. Truly. That's it's um truly it's really remarkable. Well, even a car built in Canton, you know, between 1805 and 1942, there were 542 cars built in Ohio, but seven of them were built in Canton, and one of them was the Holmes. And it's uh, as you walk through another room, it boom, there it is. And yeah, just to think about that car being built in the in the northeast end on Winfield Way. Arthur Holmes actually worked for another man named Franklin in Syracuse, New York, and then came back to Canton in 1917 and decided to build another air-cooled car. And that's another whole story with me. I can oh, go on and on and on. my. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very interesting car. But there's another piece of great Canton history. Yes, yes. In fact, George Monnet in, in the building that I'm at, his yes. building, actually uh, designed and built something called the Hydro Car, the first amphibious car in 1917. No way. Is yes. that in there? It, uh, unfortunately. No, I don't have it. There are no parts or pieces. Uh, but that all. was the first one that could do mm-hmm. land or water. Mm-hmm. Correct. Unbelievable. He drove it in Myers Lake. Oh, I remember <laughs> hearing about that. Um, probably not allowed to ask you this. Any value, <laughs> dollar value, oh. put on what you've got in there? You know what? Can I say priceless? Yeah, I would yeah. have to be. You know, and it's interesting because, you know, I get the question all the time is, have the pickers been here? <laughs> well, they can come all they want, but they're not buying anything. No, they would not um, be. You know, we well, I find stuff all the time that I've just sort of put upstairs in the attic. And I'm, I remember one of my employees had watched the, that particular program. And yes. It was a Laurel and Hardy plastic head. And he said, you know, Char, don't we have one of those upstairs? And I go, I think so. And we have either Laurel or Hardy. I'm not sure which one it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he said, we have half a priceless because that's what the value of those were. And that was priceless. So, so, so we half, have half a priceless. priceless for that, just for that. So Just for the one and head. You know what? I, I, sometimes I, I think this is, you know, sort of corny, but how can you put money on memories and history no. you know although i know there is very true but um so well, and the cars going the, back the to cars. that hearse i mean is there any way to know who those you, were used for yeah is there or was there any written history along with it I, I imagine if i did some research i have called the mm-hmm. funeral home which is still in vermilion and uh, there's there's not any history doc- well once again history is only history when it's lost and someone wants it right so it's a very difficult thing to track yes okay. what else would we find there Oh, I, I'm walking through. I've walked through the museum a couple times. Uh, we have a wonderful. Um, well, we have actually Walter P. Chrysler's personal car, and uh, that is on loan from the Henry Ford Museum. But wow. we've had it for years, and it's awesome. A beautiful. So Chrysler. on loan, it's but they're Chrysler. not asking for it back, no, they're, and we're they're glad. Good. Okay, they're that's good, good with me. They're uh-huh. good with me keeping it. I'm good. good. I'm good with. You notice I refer to cars as hers. I always <laughs> have hers. Good with keeping her. They're your friends. Uh, they are my friends. We do have a very unu- unusual Packard. In 1937, uh, it was actually owned by a man who was physically challenged, and the back seat is the wheelchair. Oh my! So goodness. it's pretty much the first handicapped vehicle in the yes. United States. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's You're very... talking about the first of a lot of things yes. right here yes. in Canton, yeah. in our own Canton mm-hmm. Classic Car Museum. Yep. Uh, somebody might have just tuned in and said, my goodness, I didn't even know that was there. I need to find it. Well, um, tell us, remind us where it I is. I will tell you. The address is 123 6th Street Southwest. Make sure you say thous- Southwest. Right. Because other side of Tuscarawas. The other side, uh, yeah, south of Tuscarawas. Uh, we're on the corner of Market Avenue and 6th Street. Uh, you perfect. Uh, free parking in the rear. We're open. Now, I always say, I have to pause for a moment. We're open seven days a week, 10 to 5. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have a Facebook page. We have a, a website, uh, which will give you all that. And uh, Do you get any people stopping in during First Friday? Um, you know, I'm hoping as we progress south of Tusk, we will. Right mm-hmm. now, I don't stay open because everything's sort of north. In it that it area. is. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping once Hercules gets involved and we we add more down there, that absolutely, I would love to be a part of that wonderful event on yeah. Fridays. I mean, you know, You'd be, that'd be a nice addition. Oh, I'm just awesome. thinking and and awesome. bring a lot of people in yeah. again. But that maybe perhaps just have not found it yet. They kind of know in the back of their heads that, oh, yeah, I know that's there. Well, once again, the connotation of cars, and even though my uh, brochure, my rack card says so much more than, than cars and there's something here for everyone, we'll actually have people who read those and come in the door and say, wow, you're so much more than cars. Mm, yeah, that's why I say that that's on all I the publicity. That. <laughs> that's my tagline. <laughs> right. But, you know, it's just one of those things. And I'm a car yes. guy. I mean, I, I've been a car guy. My, and I say that because I don't think car gal sounds quite as cool. But my whole life, from the time I was a little girl, my father was a big car enthusiast. What uh, is it about our cars? What is it? There's know, so much identity. There in is. It. And it's funny because when the Cars movie from Disney came out, someone said to me, hey, Char, don't you wish your cars talked at the museum? And I said, what do you mean wished? <laughs> because they do. They have personality. And the history is so – I could – I I have a, co- a book on my desk today. It's called Car Crazy. Mm. And, um, you know, it's just – it's one of those things that – 
they do talk and they have the men that and I say men Susie because back in that when they the beginnings you and I did virtually nothing with automobiles there were a couple red you know women that did alice's drive across the country but mm-hmm. the men that designed these you know a lot of times there were two and three that they did and they failed and then finally they hit on one and and you know the perseverance the money that it took and the innovation it's just it's astounding to me to see the progress and where we've come with what automobiles do you know mine will tell me if i'm too close and which i'm never too close to someone my husband gets too close but too close to someone on the expressway or they can park themselves or they can drive them you know yes. look how far we've come yes and the history behind those and the you know the perseverance that these people they got declined or it didn't work or it broke down or you know and there's been so many makes of cars you know if you some of them obviously lasted and you know cars that you and i grew up with pontiac no longer around Oldsmobile no longer around. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Uh, it's they're gone. Well, and you and you think, well, I love old movies. So mm-hmm. watching the people go out in front, cranking that crank, <laughs> oh. you know, turning. Can you imagine when no. we hop in our cars and push a button? Yeah, no. And my grandmother had her first car in 1911, said she'd rather crank her mule than her automobile. <laughs> so it was a difficult <laughs> task, you know. And now, yeah, I push a button. Um, how simple is that? It's so crazy it simple. Is crazy. But again, we're looking pa- into the past to get the future because oh. as you're talking about self-driving cars. Well, my grandmother had one. Its name was Maud, and yes. it was their horse. Yes, and you exactly. just hopped in, and it got you home. Mm-hmm. It knew right where to go. Mm-hmm. So here we are. What is the likelihood that that there'll be a day when you just dial up Uber and hop into something that there's not Excellent. a person driving? Oh, I think it's much closer. I've been to a lot of car, car uh, conferences, and I, it, the, it's actually sometimes frightening to think about. You know, the Jetsons was a, so far in the future yes. for us. and. It's it's here, and uh, uh, I look at that. But you know, it the history of automobiles. As you look at them, the grandeur. You know, we have a lot of '30s automobiles, and just that time. That's my era of car. I love that, about anything that Gatsby kind of thing. Yes, and the magnificent, the bigness of them. The they're just they're they're pieces of art. Could we make those anymore? Or would they just cost a fortune? They would cost a fortune. You know, we have some 16-cylinder engines, and I won't get into engines or cubic inch displacement, I promise. But you know it. you got to go to the museum and talk to Shar because she knows this stuff. And most people really aren't interested. They would, I, I, I'm interested, but I particularly care the history. I'm a big history uh, buff. I love history of automobiles, obviously. And... Uh, uh, no, the practicality of a 16-cylinder automobile today, possibly if you have the money, you know, I mean, you could have, they were doing some 12 cylinders and some 10s, mm. but, you know, it's, mm. I mean, we're looking at fuel efficiency. We're looking at a, a new bre- new brand of cars that I just heard gets 59 miles to the gallon. I'm not going to say the name. I won't give it. The, right, right. But, well, I, wow. I, you know, I, not exactly. three to the gallon with a, you know, 825 cubic inch displacement engine. You know, that's. Yeah. It Not is practical. amazing where we're headed. Of course, gas, and electric, electric, and electric cars now. Well, and you know, we had electric cars. The Baker Electric was built in Cleveland. You know, isn't that yeah. something? Steam. You so know, they knew the, how the to white do it. Steam, Dolby steam. We steam. They ran on steam. Yeah. Well, yeah. not just water. People think they were just water. They weren't just water. No, because actually a bottle of water would be more expensive than a bottle of gasoline. <laughs> yeah, so probably. when you really break it down. You know, we've come full circle. We, we really honestly have. have. Yeah. Um, Char Lotzenheiser, only one thing to say. you got to get to the Canton <laughs> Classic Car Museum um, entry. What does it cost to come? Oh, we're so reasonable. I never up the prices. It's seven fifty for adults. And then we do have senior discounts as well as children and, and youth. And uh, so it's reasonable. It's a fun day. You can spend, you can spend as much time as you want. We won't throw you out. You know, I've had people spend four hours and read every single solitary thing. We have a scavenger hunt, which adults do. Uh, we have two different ones. We have a puzzle. You can sit there and just enjoy yourself and put a puzzle together. And uh, it's just a, a great family place. I Absolutely. Think, so. so much fun. Thank you so much for Thank what you bring you. to our community. Susie, I appreciate you having me. Happy motoring, everyone.